This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Every time you think you know everything there is to know about a subject, something comes along and changes the entire paradigm. Fitness and muscle is no different. Tensegrity is a concept that completely changes the way we think about muscle and performance. This changes everything right down to the fundamentals that you learned in PE. We're gonna learn about it now, and it's pretty fascinating. So the concept of tensegrity can be a little bit tricky to visualize, which is why I've brought this little Lego sculpture, which I built with my daughter. And basically this shows us how, rather than being a series of blocks stacked on top of each other to remain upright, it instead relies on tension coming from different angles. It wants to fall this way, but it also wants to fall this way at the same time, and that's keeping it a lot. So we tend to think of the skeleton as being this stack of bones on top of each other held in place by gravity, and then the muscles and the tendons work like levers and pulleys to move the joints. This is what your PE textbook, your science textbook probably said when you were at school. This is accurate to a degree, but it misses the bigger picture because in fact, your bones are suspended in position by equal and opposite tension, pulling on it from all different angles by the muscles and the tendons. In this sense, we can describe the muscles more, as James Earls says in his book, Born to Walk, as tension tuning systems, tension tuning instruments. Their job is to apply tiny adjustments in force to keep everything exactly where it should be. And this is happening all the time as you move throughout your day. And a good example of this is the hip adductors. The hip adductors aren't only for bringing the hips, the legs together. In fact, that's probably not their primary role. Their primary role is to prevent abduction, to prevent the legs moving apart. And they work in equal and opposite force against the hip abductors. So tensegrity and tension, it's not just about keeping the body together. It's also about communication and sending signals throughout the body. So, for example, if you have a taut piece of wire, you can flick one end and the vibration will travel down to the other end. If it has any slack in it, it's not going to travel in the same way. This happens throughout the body. And as we're walking, for example, you'll use lots of different signals that are traveling from your heels, from your tibialis anterior, all the way through to your buttocks and your lats. And this is only possible thanks to tensegrity. So this is possible because the fascia, which surrounds the muscle, connects the joints, encases the organs, actually contains its own Meccano receptors. That means that it can sense changes in pressure, in length, and communicate that information across the body. This then means that action from one muscle can actually trigger and cause movement in a muscle in a disparate part of your body. For example, when you're walking, as you strike the ground with your heel, you actually move your hips. You have to then contract your glutes to counteract this and that's then felt across the fascia across the back all the way to the lats and this is how movement in the legs actually affects movement in your lats and those signals can travel without having to go the scenic route via the spinal column and the brain making them much much quicker and far quicker to react and as we walk even within our feet as I talked about recently when your heel strikes the ground you automatically plantar flex your foot goes towards the ground and then as the the actual bottom of your foot touches the ground. This triggers the plantar reflex and causes your toes to grip onto the floor. As you lift your heel, you then dorsiflex and bring your foot back up to prevent yourself from catching on anything. All this happens unconsciously thanks to tension and tensegrity. So this is all very interesting, but does it actually have any implications for the way that we train and rehabilitate? Well, in a word, yes. For starters, this reminds us of the importance of training the entire body as a single system. We don't want to extrapolate too far with this and get carried away, but suffice to say that training purely in isolation probably isn't a good idea. Likewise, if we want to address any kind of movement issues or pain or discomfort, we probably want to look at the body as a whole. Pain in one area can affect the body right across the entire system. And finally, when operating and performing surgeries, we need to be mindful of the fascia. We don't want to just cut this away. It's not just an inert stuff, far from it. It is the very stuff of our movement and our sensory perception. Certainly, we want to maintain variety in our movement if we're to prevent stiffness and weakness outside of very specific movement patterns. And in some cases, tensegrity may even reveal better ways to generate power and to move efficiently. Reportedly, some African women are able to carry 20% of their body weight on their heads without it harming the efficiency of their walking. Once again, see Born to Walk. More analysis is needed, but it seems that this possibly is thanks to their ability to effectively translate that additional downwards force into elastic energy that they can then return and use. JC Santana has said to me many times that translating force and energy is often more important than generating it. 
as when taking a running jump from one foot to dunk a basketball. You don't stop at any point, there's very little counter movement here, instead you just hit the floor with the ball of your foot and launch into the air, from a sprint. By better understanding common myofascial linkages, and learning to better maintain the elasticity of the fascia, we might be able to tap into greater and more efficient performance. There's a lot more to discover here, we're only just beginning, but it certainly makes you think. So thanks a ton for watching this one guys, I hope you found it useful and interesting, I know I find this stuff fascinating, or fascinating. As always, if you like this kind of training, you can check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0, which also comes with over two hours of video tutorials. That program should offer the kind of versatility and variety that the body thrives on. If you could hit the like button down below, that would help me out immensely, and subscribe if you want more like this. Oh, and hit the bell button if you want to be notified of new videos. But either way, thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now. But just before you go, let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful online platform that lets you develop modern, attractive, and professional looking websites. It lets anyone easily create their own website with zero coding necessary. A website is an absolute must if you're starting an online business, if you want to make a name for yourself online. So this way, anyone can get in on the act. And there's tons of features here ensuring that you can do everything you might possibly need to. You can create gated members only content, for example, which lets you earn revenue from your website. There's member management, inbuilt email communication and audience insights. There's also a fully integrated commenting system with threaded comments, replies and likes. Powerful blogging tools for sharing content, categorizing posts, scheduling publishing and more, and social media integration to display posts from your social profiles directly on your website. And that's not all. There's also powerful e-commerce capabilities with additional third party extensions that provide inventory management, marketing, streamlined bookkeeping, sales tax reconciliation and filing, and logistics for shipping globally. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, buy near viewers get 10% off the purchase of their first website or domain by going to squarespace.com forward slash Bioneer today. Thanks again to Squarespace for helping me to make more of the content I love. Thanks to you guys for sticking around, and of course, bye for now.